what up y'all welcome back to another video today we're gonna be getting into the clips i washed her yesterday so you know <sighs> she looking kind of smooth she looking kind of smooth not bad peep the intercooler you give you give so the status of the car is intercooler is on turbo's on everything is gucci slim fans are on working um so there's one thing left to do well i found a tuner uh, through one of my homies, Sean, another fellow DSMer. Um, been talking to the tuner. He ran through the whole thing, told me what I should do, what parts I should have. He doesn't really like the fuel injectors that I have, but <clears throat> he said we'll see how they do. So the only thing I have left to put on the car is an air fuel ratio gauge. Oh, right here, here we go. Say hello to the peoples, Jinx. <sighs> She's a shop cat. So yeah, uh, got the glow shift uh, dual gauge pod bezel thingy. Gonna be putting that in. So I'm moving my boost gauge to here because it's currently in the pillar. And then here's the, the gauge. So he told me, the tuner told me how to install it, wire it up to the ECU seems pretty straightforward and easy the only challenge I think I'll have here is getting the O2 sensor out of the O2 housing because that's what we're gonna be doing today and once this is on then I can pretty much hit up my dude and get this bad boy tuned I got my ECM link I had a separate uh, ECU chilling in the garage for quite a while i got it off my homie sean again man shout out to sean got the ecu tuner hookup like he pulling through for me but yeah so i swapped the ecus put the you know ecm link chip in it and it connects up to the laptop and everything so it's pretty much good to go man so all right so from what i've read that the little dash din thing uh, pops out pretty easily. It's just two screws in the top here and here and it should come out So we got her all popped out as you can see And it was just two screws there and there and then two clips at the bottom um, If you drop the steering wheel as low as you can it helps and then I just used a little tool and like poke pride from the bottom just enough to pop them out didn't want to break it you feel me so we got all the wiring routed i got the wideband sensor routed through the um whatever steering column into the engine bay so that's already there i got my boost controller i mean i'm sorry boost gauge wires routed up here as well and then i also have the afr gauges uh, AFR gauge wires routed up here um, so what we're gonna have to do here is see we got a series of wires here the blue the green and the white and the black I'm, is are optional and you don't have to use them so I twisted them together so they're out of the way the red wire I'm going to tap into a power source switch or ignition power source which um, I tapped into my cigarette lighter for my uh, boost gauge so I'm just gonna do the same thing so when I turn my little knob here it turns on both gauges I just like it like that uh, the brown and the black wire I'm gonna uh, solder together so I'm gonna solder those two tips together and then I'm gonna put it on a ring terminal I'm gonna ground it ground it to one of the ECU mounting bolts so like that one right there okay and then last but not least the white wire this wire is the what is it analog power cable um, not cable wire and so I need to go to the front OE the front O2 sensor pin on the ECU which is going to be one of these three wires and it's actually the middle one so uh, it should be pin 76 
So I'm just gonna cut the wire like about. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut the wire about, you know, right there, leave myself some room. And, uh, and then I'm gonna solder the wire from the harness of the gauge in there. And then I'll be good to go. And I just have to get the, the old O2 sensor off and put the new one in, connect everything and uh, should be good. Well guys, ran into some difficulties, of course. But like I said before, the O2 sensor was gonna be the hardest part of the job. Power is going to the AFR gauge. So my wiring worked. I just gotta get this O2 sensor off. Somehow that shit is just dummy rusted. Stupid rusted. A couple days later and one fresh haircut. Got the, uh, I actually got the AFR gauge installed that same day. I was having trouble taking off the, the O2 sensor, the old one. What I had to do was, as you can see right here, I wanted to get a regular socket on this, but you know, they're too long. So I had to get my Dremel tool and I cut it in half. Uh, and then I was able to get a socket on that and use um, my impact gun to break it loose. So now it's all in there with the dual gauge uh, cluster. And let me show y'all. Peep it. Oh yeah, actually, I don't know if I already showed you, but check it. Looks super dope and super clean. So everything is good. Um, you do need to get two, uh, two longer screws the stock ones will not fit and the holes that it show at the bottom well those are useless because there's nothing for a self-tapping screw to tap into behind that so um and yeah as you might have seen i ran my my wires and stuff up under the dash and came out right here at the top of the steering column i guess and it all tucks in nicely and you kind of don't really see it with the steering wheel pulled up all the way. So it's a nice and clean tuck. Uh, I went into Link uh, and got on the phone with the tuner and he told me all the parameters to set so that it reads efficiently and correctly. And now today, uh, which I believe is the last step and the last thing to put in, is going to be the fuel injectors. And it's pretty simple. You know, just disconnect the battery you know, have some towels for when fuel spills out and you'd be good. But the main thing, disconnect that battery. You want no damn fire. So these are FICs, but they're low Zs. So they're not high Zs. And so apparently high Zs are the way to go. But the tuner said that these are like not that consistent with each other. So it's just not as efficient and it's like old technology but um we're gonna put these in because i already got them i already bought them bam pop 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 um i just got off the phone with the tuner we set the we set the fuel trims did all that you know all that stuff set the new injector sizes basically i could um run e85 the next time my tank is empty i can stop it at e85 pump fill up on the 85 just have to change um one setting in the fuel tab and the car should run fine little tip um we found out here well he noticed like yo why does your car take so long to start up you know it takes like several cranks and then it, my car starts up uh, i was like yo yeah i mean it, it was doing that ever since i put the uh fuel pressure regulator and the fuel pump in um and he was like, you shouldn't be doing that. So go over here and show him, you know, how I have it, you know, <clears throat> the vacuum line attached. So I had the vacuum line from the regulator attached to this stock solenoid that, you know, was here with the stock stuff. I had it into here and it was running into the, uh, you know, the controller. Um, he's like, that's not where you want it. Take it off that and you want it going to the manifold <clears throat> so it reads proper uh so that you get the proper fueling 
uh because he's like that's not safe you know when you start giving it gas and shit and you know you might not get enough fuel pressure so he's like you gotta fix that like right now so we did that um so basically took it off the solenoid there whatever you want to call it and i had this t so this line here is going down to the boost gauge um and then this is going to the manifold so he's like just disconnect the this line which was attached to to the T take that off this is pretty much obsolete and then just attach it to the T so it runs to the manifold and so now also uh, my fuel pressure was too high so I had to drop that down um, so I just loosened the lock nut and you know adjusted it to where around 42 and a half because I was sitting like pretty high it's like almost 50 so uh yeah if you guys uh install this on a 2g just uh make sure you do it this way so that way your car is running right and it starts up super quick now on like the first crank and then there's another thing that i wasn't aware of but he told me um, when i turned on the car the air fuel ratio gauge was not on he said why is it not on and i was like oh i have it powered to the uh the light switch um, so I turned it and it turned on. He's like, bro, no, you got to have that shit running. It has to be on whenever the car is running. Otherwise, the car's not going to run right. I was like, oh, shit. He's like, yeah, because the new, the wide band is running the car. So it has to always be on. You can't just turn it on when you want to see the numbers or whatever. So I got to do that and tap into an ignition uh, power source, not the switch. So two things actually that I need to do so I'm gonna do that but otherwise you know step by step getting close step by step getting close